welcome to the Meeple Syrup Show, and uh, we're here with our friend from Bezier Games, Ted Elsback, and obviously my co-host, Sen Fung Lim. And uh, we're here at the Gathering of Friends, and we're very excited to talk about a game that is on Kickstarter right now. So with no further ado, Ted, why don't you tell us about it? All right, sure. So uh, the game is on Kickstarter right now, I'm very excited about it. It's a one-night design called One Night Resistance. Perfect. And uh, as a lot of people are aware of there's so One Night Ultimate World has been out for a couple of years now. Uh, the Resistance has been out since about 2009 yep. or so. They're both they're both social deduction games. They're fairly quick. They both have, you know take a look at what you did with the original Werewolf game and kind of distill it down. Got rid of a player elimination. Got rid of the need for a moderator. Mm -hmm. And they each put a very unique spin on that particular genre. And uh, so a little while ago, the owner of Indie Boards and Cards uh, and I were talking and. We thought about you know what would be like if we could combine the, these two games match in some up. way. Yeah, yeah, it's totally a match. Kind of a match awesome. up. The monster um, match. And uh, so that, as a game designer, I'm like, oh, this is a very interesting thing. You know, what are the things I really like about Resistance? What are the things I really like about One Night? Mm -hmm. I love both games. I really yeah. love Resistance. And people are like, oh, you must not like it because Werewolf and Ultimate World. No, no I, I love Resistance and, yeah. and Avalon, Avalon even more. Um, and so, you know, thought was like, okay. Well, that, that speed, you know, the things about one that people really love, they love, once they're really used to it, they love yeah. the role changing. They love that oh, thing about, yeah. I've got to figure out what I am. Yeah. Okay, i got to do this, and this is, that's The pressure's on, I just got my new role. Yeah. They love how fast it is. They yes. love that you're, you're done in five minutes, and you yeah. can play another one. And they like the idea that you have different abilities, that yeah. everyone's doing something. Um, in existence, people like that there's some structure. You can actually figure stuff out, because mm -hmm. there is, there's a process. You know that leader token's going to be moving around, and different people are going to be the ones choosing things. Yeah. And you know, like, all right, I think the spies are here. That means this token needs to go here. Yeah. Uh, if it gets within that group there, we're in trouble. So yeah. we need to make sure that we agree to a set of, of a team to one mission before it gets, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, absolutely. But it's very structured and you're all, everyone's internally thinking about things and, and there's a discussion. And so I like, I like those aspects. I tried like, how can we bring those together? And then I thought about one of the things I don't like. Right. So in resistance, um, I think most people, it's, it can be frustrating to be a resistance member several times in a row because mm -hmm. It is more fun. At least I think it's more fun to be a spy sure, yeah, sure, to the same sure. people. And then you know that that quandary of oh, well, we have two spies on a mission. What do we do? How do we fail this? You not both two yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, and that's that's fun. But when you're when you're a resistance member, you're like ah, you know, you're just you're just same out there deducing, yeah. and that's it. You don't really have anything else to do. Avalon obviously it's different because you have all the extra stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in one night, you have uh, a couple other things. Like uh, the first thing that happens right after. Um, the night's over after the, the app's done uh, announcing stuff is everyone stares and no one wants to make the first move. You know, there's yeah, a little bit of silence of, yeah. do you know, I'm not going to say what you do, what yeah. you do, yeah. what you yeah. do. And there's, there's sometimes there's a minute or two of that, that's why the timer is to yeah. get people to kind of say something, yeah. something, yeah. something's yeah. moving. So, so there's those two things that, that, again, they certainly don't hurt either game, but they're things that I'd like to be able to improve upon. Mm -hmm. So, with One Night Resistance, we've got a leader token. Okay. okay. Uh, so someone is the leader each game. It, it changes from game to game. Nice. Games are pretty quick, like, yes. like it's in one night. And what will happen is everyone gets to be either resistance or a spy. Yep. There's always the potential for three spies in the game. Oh, always. So you're always three spies and an equal number of resistance cards as there are players. Interesting. You shuffle uh, them up, give them to everyone, yeah. and you put three cards in the center, which means that could be a game where there's no spies. Yeah. It could be a game where there's three spies. And that works with any number of players. From that's three awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so awesome. It could be that everyone's a spy, although <laughs> that doesn't mean that the game's necessarily over. We'll no. talk about that in a second. Um, but in addition to your, your roll card, you get another card, which is your specialist card. Okay. Your specialist card defines what actual ability you get to do at nighttime. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, mm -hmm. we do for starter games, we recommend we have what we call the observer role, which is sure. all you're doing is trying to figure out who the spies are. Yeah, yeah. So you got nothing going on there. It's yeah, just, yeah. and then if you're a, a, a spy, you're trying to make sure that they don't figure out who you are. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all the other roles let you do something. Okay. Um, so for instance, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Inquisitor lets you look at someone else's roll card. Sure. Like the Seer and yeah. like that yeah. sort of thing, which yeah. is, is useful. Very um, but there's a bunch of other specialists that let you actually switch cards, steal mm. cards, take things from the center and give to other people. Yes. Uh, there's, there's, there, just it's a lot of fun. But the, the key is a lot of those rules are different if you're resistance or if you're spotlight. Uh, <laughs> so if you're resistance, you do one thing. Like for instance, there's a reassigner. The reassigner, if you're on the resistance team, yeah. goes and switches two players' cards, like a troublemaker in one night. Yeah. But if you're on the spy team. You actually look in the center, we call it HQ, that's yep. the center sure. uh, of folks there, find a spy 
and give it to a resistance fighter. <laughs> right, so there were no spies originally. No, there is one. Well, there are no, 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 at least one yeah, spy. Yeah. So you just take one of those spy cards in the center yeah. and give it to someone else, now you've added a spy to your team. Right, right, right. That's funny. Um, no, they don't so, know. Oh, right. right. So I have to get at least one spy for you to do that. Yeah, yes. That's me. Right. So that's what specialist cards are. So that's, you know, kind of got that one night, everyone has a different ability sort of thing mm -hmm. combined with these possibility that there's two different things going on. Sure. Which team are sure. Yeah, so faction plus but the actual team. game then is structured like the resistance in, in that uh, um, there's no app. Uh, the leader will say, all right, everyone close your eyes, spies open your eyes, look for the other spies, and close your eyes again. Now the leader does his night action. So the leader goes first. Yeah. When he's done, he says, mission accomplished. The player to his left does his night action. Right. Says, mission accomplished. And we go all the way around the room. Everyone's done. It gets back to the leader, and the leader, because he had to go first, which is a slight disadvantage, yep. he gets to check his ID card to see sure. if anyone switched it. Oh, and the spies or the resistance, someone might have changed it on purpose to let the, mm -hmm. the leader know that his card's been changed, so that yep. he might have some extra information sure, sure. or not. Then he wakes up. Now, again, in one night, this is a situation where everyone's like, uh, what did everyone do? Here, we have a little token, similar to what we had in one night in terms of what the roles are. Sure. Where people take yep. them or give and them to other people. Like, ah, you take must be a werewolf yeah, or so whatever. But here, they're the specialist tokens of this action. Uh, and starting with the leader, everyone must take a token. Oh, take so it. you've got to take one to say what your specialty is. Oh. Now, you can lie, you can take it to front, right. but you've got to take one. <laughs> and if you get to around the table and the one you actually want isn't there, you can take it from a player who's already taken it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, oh, so yeah. once, everyone, okay. yeah, once everyone has gone through a round and taken yes. one, it's, it's not on their thing anymore, then the discussion yeah. actually starts. So you have so a lot so of information to start. Like in that, you know, yeah, so right away you're like, the reassigner, what did you switch? And first, the reassigner's a spy. He's like, for a little spy. So I switched these two people. And uh, you know all sorts of things like that, but it, it just wow. kicks off that discussion in oh, a different yeah. way. That way, that's interesting. So you took some of the ideas, but really you, you tw still gave them a twist, so they're uh, kind of a new implementation. Yeah, it, it feels to me it feels like a totally different game. Yeah, I mean, well, it again, like if you like social deduction games, I think, and you like Resistance or One Night, you're probably going to like this. Yeah. Um, it, it has a little of both, and, I, and again, for me, my favorite aspects of both of them kind of mm -hmm. combined. Yep. Into one, and mm -hmm. so it still has that capacity. There's no timer. There's no. There's no app. Right. Um, so it's all determined by the players, and sure. the majority of players wants to call a vote. They do. Then the leader says three, two, one. Everyone points, just like in one night. Yep. If you find a spy, the the, uh, the village the <laughs> resistance wins. If you don't, the spies win. Right. So it's, it's that. Yeah. Well, so that's the the crux of the game, and so it's 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 really fun. Um, it's you know very easy to explain. The, the toughest part with this is because there's so many specialist abilities and they have mm -hmm. two different facets. It's absorbing that and understanding sure, where those right. abilities are. So are there, there are player aids, and that's that's one of the differences here is uh, between the other two games is we came up with a player aid, and uh, the Kickstarter one's got a lot more because you got a bunch of extra little roles that, that we put out. Oh, cool. And but it goes through and it says all the different roles of what the thing is for the resistance, what it is for the spy. Mm -hmm. So you can look at that and. Uh, no, because it's not just your own stuff you're looking at, you're looking at seeing what the other people could have done and trying to sure, figure out how it Sure. So, some questions for you from a designer's perspective. How do you play test <laughs> all this social role deduction and multiple variable power sets? Do you have a huge team? Is it just you doing it? I find it super difficult myself yes. to do social role deduction. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that is, it's, in my head, I go through it, of course. Like, all designers go through it, and it's perfect. You know, it's it's like, always perfect. It's yes, always it really is. And you're like, I should just send this to the printer now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm done. done. That's great. <laughs> all these years of working, right. now you're good enough. Oh, knock course. it out. Right away. Uh, that's never happened, of course. You know, as soon as you do the first play test, you realize the fatal flaws, yeah. and sometimes that shells the entire <laughs> game a lot of times. Uh, but, yeah. uh, which is yeah. amazing that your brain can't yeah. think of that. It's yeah. kind of like there's only so many chess moves ahead, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. You can't absorb what the, the uh, possibilities will be. Yeah. Like that. So yeah, so I definitely go through it in my head, figure it out, I write stuff down. Um, I'll do self-testing, and of course I have perfect knowledge of everything, so I'll take cards face up to see what how things interact and what they work. And that's really for the mechanics, that's to make sure that there's no big gaping holes, you know, as in uh, it just breaks the game ridiculously, right. or it's, it's so on balance one way or another. Um, but then, you know, it's off to testing, and. You know, my family will test, my wife, my two kids will, will sometimes test stuff early on, God bless them for the mm -hmm. stuff that they've had to go through, and there are a ton of games. Mm -hmm. um, I love to play games anyway, the kids do, for the most part, and they, they put up with me for a little, and they're like, okay, let's go do something else, let's watch a movie or something, we need a break from this. Yep. Because uh, I'm like, certainly new as well, we're, we're, we're playing, and I'm like, oh, wait, why did you like this? And yeah. Like, oh, just do something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
a better profession that's more cool now. Yeah. All right, uh, I don't know what that would be for me. Oh, my God, for game designers. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so it's family first usually. Um, then I have probably six or seven different groups of people oh, that wow. I test that's with nice. on a semi regular basis. Yep. Um, well, there's a. What? Locally to you? Or yeah, locally in the Bay Area. Oh, um, so awesome. I mean, Bay Area is wonderful in that we have a bazillion gamers. We actually have the largest werewolf meetup group in the country. Wow. Uh, in the world, I guess, technically. Yeah. But we have more than 500 members in the werewolf five, five, meetup group for the Bay Area. Offline. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we have, there's a ton of people who are always wanting to play these games. That's amazing. We need to go visit and play werewolf. We need to videotape just yes. a werewolf meetup with 500 people. Yeah, well, they don't all show. They don't all show. But the fact that there's that many in there, I mean, and we have, yes. yeah, uh, whatever we do, the things we actually have, we have to use the meetups waiting list thing, and we, you know, we have got a structure in place where if you don't show up, you're in trouble because there's so many people waiting to get into these wow. these venues where we don't have really room for so many people. So we have a lot of people there. Um, sometimes I'll do organized play tests, like I just did. Um, in March, I did uh, four weeks in a row at a local game store mm -hmm. where I used people from the meetup group to come test uh, the next iteration of One Night, not One Night Resistance, but in the One Night Werewolf, One Night Ultimate Werewolf line. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we did four weeks in a row of that and got different combinations of people. And I tried to get up to 10 people if we could to so do sure. their max right. testing, you know, yeah, trying yeah. to break things break and yeah. see, you know, what potential there is for disaster there. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of small groups, so four and five, trying to get a lot of games going mm -hmm. as possible. Character combinations. How do you deal with that almost inevitable disaster? Mm -hmm. um, mentally. It, it, well, oh, mentally? Well, yeah. I mean, normally, if there's a real disaster, you just quit and you have something else that you know is a little better that you can maybe bring out that's been tested before. This is a good thing to know. Right? But, um, you know, I, I think there's some of those times that's happened. I know last year, gathering friends, I brought a prototype that I had tested maybe once, and then I made huge changes to it. Um, and I brought it here, and I tested it with some people I didn't know that well, which is a big mistake because they're looking and they're going, oh, Ted, you got a new game, I'm excited to try this. And I'm like, well, it's, it's pretty new. Right. Uh, oh, it just, I mean, flop is not the right word, failed. <laughs> it was just like, it was dead on arrival. Right. And I'm like, can we just stop? Because I know there's problems here. And then I just, the game just, unfortunately, it's, it's dead, I think, at this point. But it's a terrible feeling. I mean, that's yeah. a, when you know, so, and you can tell on people's faces. You know, you're yeah. watching, and you can tell that there's a little awkward, like they're doing this, but they're not having fun, you're miserable because you're like, oh my god, this stuff's not working, all this stuff I tried. Yeah, um, yeah so yeah, I just suck it up and move on to the next day. Yeah. Is, there, um, is there any uh, characters or roles in the game that are your favorite so far? That for, for, for one, one night one resistance? resistance? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, you know, the observer is no fun because you don't get to do anything, but that's a good about Sure, I sure. think that's the important, first thing. Important to learn. Um, it's okay in the game. It gives an out for people. They can say, oh, they're yeah. ready to do anything. Yeah. Um, I prefer that everyone has a role because I think it's much more interesting mm -hmm. than things mm -hmm. you can do. But yeah, no, I can't say I'm no upset fit, having yeah. any of those roles or That's good particularly stuff. excited. I'm, there's a couple that are a little scary to have when you're a spy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one that's a lot of fun. So one is the signaler. So you know how spies have secrets sure. and handshakes and signals and stuff. Absolutely. Assistance. Well, so what you do in one of your resistance, if you're the signaler, is if you're on the resistance team, you have to tap the person on your right or left with your fifth, one of the people. Just one of them. Just one. Doesn't matter. If you're a spy, you have to do the same thing, but only if there's a spy sitting next to you. Oh, okay. So now, if you have that signaler token, you're like, I'm a signaler, and you're a spy. <laughs> well, and if you were a spy, that's cool. But, however, it does have a link between us. If yes. someone looked at one of our cards, yeah. we have a problem. So right. now it's like, oh, should I take that or should I take something else? Yes. So uh, there's, there's that sort of like, oh, there's tension <laughs> there. Uh, that just happened when we were playing earlier that I was a spy. Signaler, there was one other spy. I tapped her. Someone outed that spy. And I was like, <laughs> they didn't out me. Oh. But it was, oh, I'm like, oh, this is a problem. I don't know how we're going to possibly get out of this one. So. Why do you think people like social deduction games mm -hmm. so much? I, I, there, I think inherently there is something that is very, very satisfying, at least for me, and both figuring out stuff um, and, and like getting to the root of me, like going, you know what, I think it's fine, and I think I know why. And you come up with a solution in your mind. Mm -hmm. There's something very satisfying with yeah. solving a puzzle like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's not a tangible puzzle. It's kind of this, this, this loose sort of things that are floating around. That's one part. I think the other part is there's something very satisfying about getting away with yeah. doing something. Somebody, right? Yeah, getting away with doing something mm -hmm. that you're not supposed to. If there's something kind of fun about that, Absolutely. something exciting about that, and 
point, and it's, it's satisfying. Like, you know, I think in, in One Night Ultimate Werewolf, most people tell me that the, their best games, the, the ones they love the most are when they were the tanner, <laughs> and they got yeah. it, and they won because uh, of that. Yeah, yeah. They are just ecstatic in that sense. <laughs> More than half the time, people say that's their favorite thing. <laughs> Somehow they convince people to vote for them, yeah. and it's so satisfying. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, all of you lost. <laughs> I won. I, ah, just well, it's, 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 so like, it's like shooting the moon in, in hearts or something. Yes. Like you pulled yes. off some amazing move. Yeah. You basically just proved that you were clever than everybody yes. on the table. More yes. clever, cleverer, whatever the word is in yeah. English. Yes. You know, yeah. That word. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that. I think there's there's something there. There's something I think that everyone wants to be able to feel like, wow, they've they've outwitted and outsmarted everyone else. Yes. At, at, at something like that, and it's really satisfying when it happens. But at the same time, when it doesn't, when it doesn't work, it's okay. It's not like, oh, this is terrible because it's, it's quick. It's yeah, that is like, oh, you man, tried it. I, I was so close, and if I would have known this, or yeah. if I would have, you know, I didn't think about this aspect. Of, yeah, yeah. So that's another thing about social games, especially role deduction games, that I find is that there's that. Five to ten to fifteen, sometimes twenty minutes, almost as long as you played the game, you debrief about it afterwards. Yeah. You talk about it. Talking us. about it is so and people yeah. have memories of like the Tanner experience yeah, yeah. or that time that, you know, you know, you killed the other werewolf really early on in the game and I survived as a werewolf for the whole yes. thing to win it, you yep. know? Yep. That's that's that amazing experience that you can't get from a lot of other types of games because, you know, this is just there's no dice. There's no luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so you're, so, you're so choice. tied to the components in yeah. a traditional game, and the components are so light to play a so social election game that you're not thinking of that. You're thinking of the people, you're thinking of the interactions you have. Looking in people's eyes. Yeah, and, and you're, you're thinking about those things. And, mm -hmm. you know, that happens, and certainly with regular werewolf or ultimate werewolf, when you're, when you're playing a long game and there's just some epic things happening, and you're, you're good side or bad side of it, and boy, it just, it just sticks with you. And like you said, the discussion afterwards just goes on and on and on. And the moderator usually says, come on, we have to play another game. I'm like, hold on, we want to quit just talking about this a little bit more. It was so much fun. Uh, we had a night, we had a game the other night with Ultimate Werewolf where uh, Christine uh, was a werewolf. She was on my team. I was a werewolf. I got Frank and I got into a thing because we do that sometimes. <laughs> And uh, I got killed. He was the seer, though, so they killed him before. I heard, I heard he got popped right away. Yeah, yeah right away. <laughs> he, he added me, and then the world's uh, in, you know, for revenge killed him. But after that, uh, it was down to three people. Christine was a werewolf. Two other villagers weren't sure. Yeah. She got muted by the spellcaster right before he died, right before the spellcaster died. So she couldn't talk. They nominated her. She's got this incredible pantomime to, to ah, prevent them from killing her. And she succeeds. She succeeds. She succeeds. She succeeds. And that's that's right. And then we're almost no one. Yes. very exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so crazy. that sort of thing is where you know, yeah. that sticks with you for a Absolutely. Well, I, my first experience was last night with the werewolf. And then, Did you play werewolf? And I got down to that scenario yes, where yes, it was the final and three. And yeah. we had to get Tony as yeah. a werewolf. And he was right beside me. And the whole oh, time, yeah. he had suckered me into thinking he was trustworthy. Yep. And then we turned on him right at the right time. And we yeah. only got him. So. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's now, uh, with the Kickstarter, what's the pledge levels? Or like how, like so, yeah, so it's, it's all about saving games. It's actually an empty boards and cards thing. Yeah, and I think it's just basically, uh, I haven't looked at it recently, but it's just one pledge level. It's just for the game. It's, I, think it's, I think it's 25. Ish. Uh, we'll, yeah, have right the we'll have a link. We'll have a link. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's doing really well. I think we're, what, four days in, and it's way over 50,000 already. So awesome. it's, it's, it's done really well. Well, I mean, people can trust great quality games because they have already experience with One Night, they already have experience with Resistance, yeah. so you know what you're getting. You're yeah. getting a great experience, tiny box, huge yeah. gameplay. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then, you know, with companies like Bezier and uh, Indie behind that product, yeah. you, you can't really go wrong in terms of reporting quality, uh, meeting deadlines, all those, you know, really important things yeah. for Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can trust even that the game sucks, which it won't. <laughs> it will not suck. I think people awesome. are really into it. Our playtests yeah. have been one of those things where we've had to tear the game out of people's hands. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we got to stop and do other stuff now. They're like, no, no, just one more. One more. Because um, so, they know they can't so have it for quick. a while. It's yeah. so quick. Oh, yeah. So. And it's, again, it's the five to ten minutes. That's perfect. Time. That's I mean, true. I've been playing a lot of One Night Werewolf, so I'm very excited about this. Because my group played a lot of Resistance, mm -hmm. and then we moved on, and now I'm looking forward to this because it'll be my excuse to come back oh. to the Resistance yeah. world. So, yeah, right, right. Yeah, very, good. very excited about that. So thanks, 
Ted, for your time. I and uh, please sure. check this out. We're going to try to have this video up. Hopefully, you're seeing this and the campaign's still going. And uh, you can be spreading the word, uh, share it with your friends. Uh, and hopefully, there's about a week left still of the campaign. And uh, we really encourage you to check it out, tell your friends. The best way for this to really spread is. Tell your friends. Share it. Share it. And we'll, we'll take a look at the components and we'll get this video up to you guys, okay? Thanks. Thank you.